Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Divided. No, you can cut that out. <laughs> you know what? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's just see. Maybe we can cut this out later. I think what you're trying to say is Divided. No. See? Welcome. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I'm Robert from the United States. And, and I, I have Lionel, Lionel McClintock from Toronto, Canada. Canada. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. Uh, it's, you know what? It's going to be a heck of a day. Uh, um, right, we have a, a couple of things we want to talk about today. Uh, some interesting stuff. I don't know why, why my light is all messed up. I got it too much to the side here. But I'm going to put up with it for now. Um, hopefully you can too. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about is, uh, because there's elections coming up in both countries in the not too distant future, we thought we'd, uh, just kind of compare the, uh, the way things work, uh, how elections work in the United States versus Canada. And maybe we'll mention a couple of things about how laws <laughs> are done in Canada versus United States, which are eerily similar and have only minor differences on the way we actually create and make laws that in many cases, most of us don't think should exist. In some cases, we think there should be ones that aren't there. But right. that said, uh, we'll start off with the biggest difference in Canada and the way elections are run is, and, there, and don't, don't get me wrong, there are some similarities. There are, it's so different, but there is a similarity. For instance, when you vote for the president of the United States, you don't necessarily get that vote to count unless the electoral college has enough and says, okay, we'll insert them in this particular state. Is that correct? Well, yeah. I mean, you can't I mean, I dumbed it state. down, but yeah. Well, yeah, you can't win a state without the electoral votes of that state. So it's it kind of is like a... Um, you know, a triangle, you know, so I mean, all the citizens vote, yes. then the state says, okay, most of the citizens voted for this person. And so then we're going to cast our electoral votes for this person. And then at the end, whoever really has the most electoral votes wins the presidency, but which ultimately which, it's decided by the majority of what yes. the popular vote is as well. But in the last couple, well, last several, I think, the popular yeah, yeah. vote has been different both from electoral votes. Both cases of Bush. So. Both, both cases of <laughs> yeah. Bush. So it hasn't always and been the Donald same. Trump, yeah, and to some extent, in a couple of states, even Biden got away with a couple, and that's true. Yeah. Um, although his popular vote win was legitimate in virtually every other state, uh, in some cases by a landslide, but in Canada, we don't vote for the prime minister at all. We vote for uh, a party, and in doing so, we have to actually vote for a specific person within the riding in which we live and only where we live. So for instance, I live in a specific neighborhood in Toronto. So I have to vote for the person that is running the party. Or if I don't care about the party and only about the policies of that particular person, and if I think they'll be helpful to my community, then I might vote for that person. And this has good and bad because people will vote for someone that they think will actually help their community. To try to help their community because if you're one voice in one community, how's that going to make any difference in government that's supposed to be for the entire country? Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. If you live in downtown Toronto, it always makes a difference. If you live in downtown Montreal, it might. If you live in downtown Ottawa, it always makes a difference. If you live in downtown Winnipeg, no. Regina, maybe Calgary, no, probably not. You know, small town Saskatchewan, not going to happen. So it, it's, that's for provincial elections as far as I'm concerned. But in Canada, you vote for that person and they become a, a, a member of parliament or an MP, not to be confused with military police, which when I was growing <laughs> up, I always had to keep asking, why do they have military police? Why are we voting for them? Um, and they said, no, guys, you're watching too many U.S. shows, son. <laughs> <laughs> but don't we have military police? Yes, we do, but we don't call them that. 
Okay. So, and interestingly enough, uh, in the provincial governments, they have MPPs. So that's member of provincial parliament. <laughs> so it's not actually confusing, but it might sound confusing if you've never heard of it. Um, it sounds like your government's overpopulated just like ours. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. So the bottom line is each one of these members of parliament in these writings, they, if they're voted for, they go and they represent the government or represent their area in the government and make up X amount of seats so you get beyond the threshold and your government gets what's called a minority government. We have more than two parties. So, um, and usually it's oh. only two that make any big difference, but sometimes three make a huge difference. So uh, right now, for instance, the liberals have a, I believe it's a minority. I don't think they made a majority. I can't remember because I'm starting to care less and less because I haven't seen a good politician um, in a long time. But nonetheless, um, so uh, I don't remember what that, I have to look that up, but I don't remember how many seats they need. It's probably 150 or 60 or 70 or something along that line. And once they get above that threshold, they would have, probably a minority government because the other two parties are going to be split up to a certain point. And the one that has the second most becomes the official opposition. And that gives them a huge amount of voting power. And the third party, if they have enough seats to make any difference at all, they will either align themselves with the official opposition to make a bigger difference than the actual government can, or they will align themselves with the official government so they can basically get almost anything they want done by saying, we'll pass whatever you want if you put our agenda on there too. And it just right. wipes out the other government almost completely from voting. And it, it's kind of dumb, but we still have a Senate just like you do, but it's not just like yours at all. Our Senate, I actually don't know <laughs> what it does. They're appointed um, at some point and they're for life. They're there until they die. Really? Uh, making however oh, wow. many hundreds of thousands of dollars until they die. Uh, and that's it. They're not replaced unless they die or they choose to leave. And if you're making $190,000 a year and you only have to go to work 75 days a year, why, why would you quit? So I don't know. <laughs> I, um, where, where do I get that job? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Move to Canada. Uh, yeah. Win a small election in a small writing somewhere in tuck to yuck tuck or something and 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 then and then apply to get into the senate by simply bending over in front of the guy who's prime minister next year <laughs> you get whatever you want get appointed um they basically help pass laws and that is literally it they don't really have any say in the matter except for the vote uh on if it should be passed and it almost always goes with whatever um the governing party is voting for um, unless the official opposition is voting heavily against it and they have support of the third party. So it's interesting, interesting. how that gets done. Um, yeah. And that's how, that's how you vote for the prime minister. You never actually see the prime minister's name on a voting card ever. Interesting. So can the same prime minister be, Oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, there's going to be, there's going to be Canadians that are going to correct me. You do because the prime minister can actually be elected in their own writing. And it's, it's possible for a prime minister to actually be voted out of office as the official member of parliament in their own writing, but their government still wins and they still get to be prime minister. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Yes. <laughs> I don't have to tell you that that's actually happened in the past. But anyways. <laughs> wow, yeah. All right, let's, let's, let's hear how the American system works there. Because honestly, that, that whole electoral college thing has always confused me. And even though I have a much better understanding of it now, that much better understanding is kind of the same as me saying I understand how a dirt bike works by looking at it. Yeah, well, I mean, it is basically the same thing as far as, you know, it's... You can't have... Excuse me, let me back up. Like we <laughs> talked a minute ago. The popular vote and the electoral vote can be different, which to me, honestly, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because if a state's popular vote is A, but then the electoral is B, how did B get there 
And it, it sometimes is confusing. And there's always a big uprising about the popular vote. Um, why do we have the Electoral College? There's been a lot of people who want to get rid of the Electoral College because they feel like it's it's unbalanced and unfair. Because let me let me let me for example, me. like this tiny state of New York has like I don't know a huge amount of Electoral College votes. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly. Wait, how wait, much. Let, me, let me just let me back you up for a second. It, it should probably be mentioned. One thing I do happen to understand is is the um, uh, the Electoral College to a point how it works. They do base it off population within a state. So Rhode yes. Island has very few electoral college votes, whereas New York, who has a massive amount of people, have a crap ton of electoral college votes, as does Texas, Florida, and so on and so on, California. So the bottom line is, it is possible, based on what you're saying too, uh, that a president could be elected or not elected because those electoral college votes get passed in a different direction than the popular vote. Correct. And actually, and they called for this in some states in the last election with the whole Biden-Trump issue that you can basically, I don't know how it works because I've never seen it happen. But you could actually force a state to apply the votes to a particular candidate that's not what the state voted for. Yes, they are. There's, there's a legal precedence, obviously, that has to be applied and, and a process that has to go through. You can't just say, oh, OK, Biden won. But hey, and that's why that's why never, Trump didn't get it, because. Right. You can't just say, oh, uh, yeah, forget it. Let's go ahead and just give it to him. Anyways. Yeah, they tried that in a couple of states um, in the last election. I don't remember which ones. Was one of them Nevada? Or was it? I don't recall. I don't remember. Uh, it, it, it was some state either south or Midwest or something. I don't remember. But um, yeah, it, it, it was weird because I th that's when I first started trying to figure out and wanted to know more about how that system worked because it seems like I understand why they did it. Um, the whole purpose of it is just one more thing that they put together. And when you think about it, the plan was originally probably bordering on brilliant because the idea was they never wanted to have a dictator or a king or an emperor or a military coup. They wanted to be sure that whoever ruled the country has a, had to be account accountable uh, and answer to the people always. And in order to do that, they wanted to make sure that their vote was going to be real. So even if there was a chance of voter fraud, the electoral college could step in and say, this is what's going to happen. And I believe that that is part of the reason that they did that. It's kind of defunct idea now. And I don't think they should still be using it because it's a, it's an excuse for somebody with, you know, funny hair <laughs> to, to abuse the system i don't want a bad mouth anybody right now because i don't want to get certain types of supporters coming after me <laughs> so we'll just, we'll just say well you know uh, they say if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything <laughs> actually you know i'm not sure i heard that before but i think i understand it perfectly and i agree that's true um well it's it's you know i you know i'll i'll and see, here's here's the thing that that I personally um, have I don't like the primaries. You know, we just went through our primaries, and unfortunately, none of the other candidates for either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party made it through primaries without unseating the incumbent. So basically, that means that Trump is going to be more than likely obviously it hasn't officially happened but there's nobody running against them so it's like the electric the republican party is going to have to put him as their republican candidate in the presidential race and the democrats are going to have to put biden in as their candidate because there's no other democratic party or member that's gonna be able to unseat well, biden, biden all, won all nobody, the democratic electoral votes and trump all the, you know it's, it's, been, I, it's been ludicrous 
I, I'm pretty sure in the entire history of the United States of America, please correct me if I'm wrong, no uh, sitting president who is running for a second term has ever been challenged during an election year, like during an election year, for his position in the party to run in the next election. I don't think that's ever happened, has it? Not that I can recall. I mean, yeah, I don't know, think so. It could be. I yeah, I mean, most of the time, the 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 sitting incumbent's gonna gonna get it. You know. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the but, things about Canada that I think most people don't know, but some Americans are unaware of, is is um, that we don't have a minimum or maximum rather amount of time that a, a prime minister can can be in office. You can win election. I was going to ask you about that. election. Like if you yeah. if you were able to win an election at 18 years old, which obviously isn't going to happen, um, you could theoretically be president until you're 173 if you could live that long. <laughs> Uh, pre prime that's, minister, I mean, listen to me, making a complete that, idiot. That's of almost myself. that's almost like president of Canada. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> prime minister, but uh, so Marooney, for instance, uh, served. Um, God, I can't remember. Was it eighty three? I gotta look that up again. Um, the man who uh, the former prime minister, who unfortunately, passed away a couple yeah. of weeks ago or last week. Um, uh, he's actually the guy I think of as the last politician who i would sit down to dinner with um as a human being i think everyone that's come after him even the ones i liked uh were just too fake and they grew up and they grew up sorry they got their jobs in the internet age uh, guys like jean Chrétien, who didn't get his job in fully in the internet age but sure as heck ended it he had two terms mulrooney had two and change i think right um prior to him there was a couple of other people who only lasted a half a year or a year because we have a thing called a, a vote of no confidence. Uh, when they do their budget um, shortly after they form their first government or several months or whatever it is, um, that's a chance for opposition parties to band together and say, let's vote no confidence and get them out of here. Um, right. And it doesn't work if, they have, if the sitting party uh, has a majority government because they're going to lose the vote because they don't have you know, enough votes. But if they have a minority government, it only takes 50% to beat them. Not 51, 50. <laughs> or maybe less if it's a small minority. Because um, okay. you, can, you can basically be the form, form the government with barely over 40% of the vote. If the other ones are split enough and you have the biggest vote, you get a minority government. The other two combined can wipe you out. And it's happened a few times. Uh, a couple times in a row in the 80s where we had two prime ministers that lasted less than a year and one less than two years and the other one only a few months before a vote of no confidence and the yeah. first time that i remember that happening was after trudeau the elder trudeau pierre elliot uh the father of the guy now <laughs> um he didn't i don't think he lost i think he just decided not to run and whoever it was in the liberal party actually did win yeah that's right somebody else in the liberal party ran in his stead and they won the election and it was terrible and only a few months later or several months whatever it was uh they just said and voted no confidence and they had to actually have another election and trudeau came back out of retirement <laughs> and <laughs> ran the country for another two years or three years or something like that again and <laughs> finished a whole another term before he finally retired permanently so he was president or prime minister of canada for the very better part of just over 16 years. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I don't, I, I don't uh, I agree with these kind of terms like that. I, I I'm glad that we have, you know, four year term with a two term always, maximum. You that, didn't, that, you didn't that, always. Our terms are well, technically four years, but we can do a maximum of five, but there's a number of reasons why they almost always called four a fifth year would almost always spell the death knell of a government because people would say, oh, you're on your last year. You don't care anymore. We're not going to vote for you, even if you do do it right. Um, so governments started to figure that out a long time ago. So for many years when I was growing up, I always remember our elections being the exact same time, well, a month ahead of yours. But this pretty much the same year we'd be elected and our prime minister would be sworn in within days of your prime president being sworn in and that kind of thing. So. Basically, Trudeau was prime minister when Nixon was still president. 
or when Nixon became president. Wait, when did Nixon become president? I don't know. Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Oh, Lord have mercy. I thought you would know that one. Um, was it 68? I was going to say like 70. Um, I guess it would have been 72. I was going to say 72, but I could be wrong. Uh, Here, I'll look it up real quick. When was Nixon president? Or you can ask Google. Microsoft Copilot. Oh, shoot. It's, it, it, it took everything I just said, including Microsoft Copilot. It's going to answer that question. All right, let's go with that. <laughs> It does it does work pretty quickly, Copilot. But we can get into that later. Nineteen sixty nine. Nineteen seventy four. Okay. So the reason I was thinking sixty eight is because again it's when he when he won the election. Um, yeah, I mean I knew he was somewhere like late yeah. early early seventies. I was thinking yeah. more early seventies and late sixties. Right. So true true Joe yeah. basically served as prime minister throughout all of Nixon, all of Ford, all of Carter. Part of um, Reagan, and then came back and finished all of the first term of Reagan's plus a year uh, on Reagan's second term. So that's that's how many presidents you saw. When we saw one prime minister, technically two, because of the guy that was in there for X amount of months. That's crazy. It is crazy, but um, at the same time. Uh, you can't go any further. Um, it, it has safeguards in that you have to be forced to call an election if you do a bad job. So like I said, the other parties can get together and have a vote of no confidence because there's no way you win four consecutive majority governments in Canada. You might get one or two, and he did. His first one was a minority. Second one was a majority. His third one was a minority again. And his fourth one became a majority only because of the other government screwing up. But at any moment, the other governments could have got together and said vote of no confidence, and it would have ousted him right out of there. So those are the safeguards we have in Canada for that reason. And I just wish that there were better safeguards in the U.S. system <laughs> so that the well, same guy that is being charged with criminal offenses couldn't actually run for president. I'm saying... Yeah, don't get me started with that. That's <laughs> that's another whole thing. I, I yeah, I don't I don't understand how um he can even be allowed to run. But and there's been some states have tried to remove him off the ballot, but then the Supreme Court has stepped was, in and yeah. no, you can't do that. Yeah, they shut it down. Uh, the very fact of the matter is that even even one of the charges being nothing but an allegation in the sense that they don't have any hard evidence in a couple of things. They might be civil cases only but the fact of the matter is if you're accused of a sexual crime and it can't be proved that you didn't do it at least at this point in time why are you allowed because i'm allowed to not hire you for a job if i own a business and you're being accused of sexually assaulting someone i i you know as an employer i have the right to say i'm gonna have to wait and see how this court case goes on uh, for now let's no. why can't the american people do that it doesn't I don't make any sense to me. I mean, you know, Mel, they, they have the 25th Mel Amendment Gibson. where you can actually unseat a president, but it takes a, and yeah, it's, yeah, it, it, they, people have tried to call for it before, but you know, unless you truly have a president that's incapacitated and can't make decisions, there's really no reason to remove them from office. Well, I, well, you know what I mean? I, I, I agree with that to a point, but at the same time, keep in mind what you just said might sound to some insurgents <laughs> as 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 a, a cry for saying yeah you, you can't take him away no matter what he does um if you're if you're trying to create riots as the leader of a country you're going against what the presidential powers have been written for the presidential powers in the first place and it's always been that the president is there to serve the people and if the people don't want the president, then they just vote for somebody else. And nowhere in American law does it say that a president can pardon himself. And if, if he tries to write that into law, what idiot is allowing that to happen? 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, this, uh, this. Oh my God! Why is my energy saver coming on? I'm sorry. I'm afraid this is gonna talk talk amongst yourselves for a second while I fix this. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> I now understand why certain things weren't working earlier. Turns out somebody unplugged my extension. <laughs> <laughs> that was a close call. I bet I, I bet I bet I had this machine down to about two percent, right? Uh, pretty close. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I cut you off. What were you saying? Um, actually, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I sat here in silence for a minute and then <laughs> I think this is probably a good segue to probably move off the election. Yeah. Topic. You know what? Yeah, I, I, I agree. <laughs> um, all right. What was next on your agenda there? Oh, one of the things I, I just wanted to mention was this whole Roku thing, because, um, you know, there's been a lot of um, security breaches in the news lately, it seems. Uh, and they just, I, you know, it's going to be a part of our world, like for the rest of our lives. And it's about trying to strike a balance in, you know, security and safety and still having convenience and functionality. And it's going to be, it's a, it's a cat mouse game and it's never going to stop. But, uh, you know, Roku had like 15,000 accounts breached where people were, somebody got in and was trying to buy things with people's cards american express had a third party servicer breached which ultimately released i don't know how many millions of uh, american express card numbers social security numbers i mean like a huge swath of information yeah that's I mean, more and more and it's with every year that go that passes lately yeah well it's it's really just something that i think people just need to understand secure your stuff the best you can, you know, to yeah, factor in, in the case of something yeah. like Roku, there's not a lot you can do about it. Roku is not exactly, um, you know, like, like logging into a bank or something like that. The only security you have logging into Roku is what's your email address and, and, you know, and whatever other information they ask for you. Like I don't use Roku, Roku, but I'm sure they probably have two factor. Almost everybody has some form of two factor. now. Well, they didn't the last but, time I was using it. And they haven't asked for the TV I still have upstairs. It's Roku. Yeah, I I, I honestly don't know. I don't use but any Roku. Let me let me just uh, do a, a quick brief thing here. I just to check this out because I was unaware of this until you brought it up to me. Um, Roku recently experienced a data breach that affected more than 15,000 accounts. To put this into perspective, again, Roku is not massive like something like having a Samsung TV or 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 even a Google TV nowadays. But 15,000 is still a mad, it's a good number, but it's nothing compared to what it could be if this had been like an, an Apple product or something like that, right? Well, they have 80 uh, million subscribers. Yeah. Well, not really. They have, they have 80 million potential subscribers in the sense that there are enough units out there that they consider it that, but they don't. A lot of people will buy three TVs for their house. Because you can get Roku TVs like a TCL forty three inch yeah, but I, TV I, I, for your I kid's think... bedroom, uh, and they sign in on all of them so they can watch the free stuff, and and so each one of them is considered uh, a subscriber. Uh, let's see, I have it pulled up here uh, because I, I don't think that's. I'm not saying that's inaccurate what you're saying, but I don't think that the eighty million is inaccurate as far as actual accounts. Well, it, it's inaccurate uh, so... in the sense that they include. Every single TV that you sign in with yours as a separate account in the sense of how many are signed in. I don't think so because that's not an account. It's, not it's just like Netflix. Active, it's not 83 million active users on Roku. How the hell would they do that? Nobody even uses Roku know. anymore. Um, Let's see. Roku's total number of active accounts rose to 80 million in the fourth quarter. Of what year? This year. <laughs> the past year. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth quarter of last year. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Those accounts accumulated must, twenty nine point one billion hours of streaming. That must be only in Central India or something. 
because it sure as heck ain't in North America. Um, it's not, and, and that that's not the way it sounds. I just it doesn't mean, geographically if you break don't it have down, a lot of money if they're not in a big center and you have less money. Like I said, you can you can go on Amazon right now and buy a forty three inch TCL or any other brand that has Roku attached to it for about one hundred and eighty five dollars. You sure. know, maybe three hundred dollars. And and some people will go and buy two or three for their kids' bedrooms, one for the, you know, for the playroom or something like that, or a small gaming TV for for the kids and their Wii. Wait, well, you Wii's buy an old HDMI thing, but you know what I mean. Twenty nine ninety five. So I mean, you know, What's it's, that? you can buy an HDMI stick for twenty nine ninety five. So I mean, it's well, yeah, but I'm talking about the TVs that are on it. Not very many people go and buy a Roku stick when you've got a, um, you got uh, what do you call it? Um, Help me out here. <laughs> the other options, <laughs> Google's, <which> Google TV, is, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, but no, the other that other Amazon's uh, has one. Uh, the other one, I can't remember the name of. But um, you get all of these other. Uh, the, well, actually, it is Amazon's. Yes, um, and and they and they, they 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 offer more. There's more to them. They work better, and they're not really that much more expensive. You can obviously get the cheaper version of each, any one of those for pretty much the same as the Roku, and you're guaranteed to have more content on it. So, yeah, yeah regardless of the, there's still the people that go Roku. on it. The bottom it, line it, is, though, what I'm saying is they may have said they have 80 million active users, but they never said anywhere that it was 80 million separate active users. Google's numbers are like that too. They'll say, this is how many pixels we've sold. They don't mention that Sean is one of the ones that has eight of them. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter how many accounts they have. It's irrelevant. The whole point I was trying to make is, regardless of what accounts it is, secure your stuff. And if someone has your credit card number, if you're not watching your credit card, like you can't use any of my cards without me getting a notification that the card has been used. Well, yeah, you should and have that set up. I, I, but probably, I mean, I don't know the numbers, but I'm sure there's a majority of people that don't set up notifications for when their cards are used outside well, of their presence. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I can tell you, honestly, I've actually called either the bank or whatever credit card company I was dealing with in a couple of times and said, what is this? I need to know what this is in a panic because I didn't know what it was. I got a notification about, of course, after some investigating, I discovered it. It was something I purchased in a place I'd forgotten I'd gone to. So I, <laughs> but the point is, had it been fraud, I, I could have had it dealt with quickly. And yeah. But see, so like I, I, I was on vacation in Louisville one time and I had one of my Amex cards. You mean Louisville? Old. Louisville. I actually had not had this last card week. that long. And I, we were sitting having lunch, and all of a sudden I get an alert that my card was used at a Target in Michigan somewhere for like $190. Well, and it, it was actual card swipe, it said. So I'm like, okay, first off, I'm not in Michigan. And yeah, <laughs> so that <laughs> right off the bat. Fake. So I just, I, I didn't panic. I mean, I just went into my app, I froze my card, and then literally minutes after I froze my card, another charge came through for 400 some odd dollars from another store that was wow. immediately declined, of course. Yeah. So, but see, that's the importance of making sure you have access and notifications because and I, like had I, you not, mentioned I would have still got my money back, but it would have yeah. might've been harder or it might've been more of an issue. Cause I called American express as I got done. I said, look, I froze my card. This car, this charge is fraudulent. I'm not there. I froze my card. Please disac you know, deactivate it. Send me a new one. And they took the charge off my card within a couple of weeks and you know, no harm, no foul. But if I wasn't watching it, the 180 might've been 1800 or something, you know, and it'd been harder to deal with. Well, so. first of all, first of all, had you not been paying attention, you would have been down another 400 and some odd dollars beyond that, <laughs> right. that very same day, just that quick. Right. And if that had gone through, it likely would have wiped out. the Cause you notice the first one was hundred to something you said, right? Second one was over 400. That means the third one, they right most likely would have went over a thousand. And then they would have tried one more time at the end of the day. And if it passed, 
they would have went back one more time the next day for like 1500 or something. Oh and, yeah. Cause that's, that's the way, that's the way they'll do it. If it passes a small one, they figure it'll go unnoticed. So they'll do something else that won't go as noticed. Then they'll wait several hours or the next day, if me even, and they'll try a thousand or 1500. If it goes, they'll wait yep. one more day and they'll try to clean you out. But if that's your debit card and not a credit card and it wipes your checking account out, well, now you can't pay your bills because a lot of bills you can't pay with a credit card. So it's not yeah, like well, you have a backup. You, you know what, though? Here's the interesting thing. In Canada, we're actually protected the same way you are with a credit card um, with those types of uh, fraudulent transactions. You don't have to argue with the bank very, very much because our debit cards, almost all of them, um, are, are Visa debit or MasterCard, debit MasterCards, almost all of them. So you basically get pretty much the same protections, except for when you're making purchases online. You don't get all that insurance stuff and everything like with a credit card purchase. But for fraudulent purchases, you've got, you're backed up by both MasterCard or Visa. Well, I'm not saying that you wouldn't get your money back. But it doesn't happen immediately. So if somebody no, wipes out your checking true. account, that is true. But I will tell and you, and your car payment comes in the next day. Now you're going to you bounce get, your car no. payment. Yes, but you can get money back into your bank account considerably faster in Canada than you, when you will get it back to your credit card, because uh, uh, the investigation will only have to go so far for them to say we'll give you the money back. If they're acknowledging that it's fraudulent, they don't have to finish the investigation to put it back in your account with a credit card. They may say it could take five, 10 days or whatever it is, right? And, and business days. So you might have to wait a little bit longer to get that money back. But um, with a bank account, and again, it depends on how much. If somebody defrauds you of $10,000, you're screwed because you're going to be waiting a long time to get that money back. And you may have to fight the bank over it, even if they admit it was fraudulent. Well, but for that's why when I travel... No. When I travel, I never use my debit card ever. I use a credit card and I'll just pay the card because if something were to happen like that, no harm, no foul as far as, okay, cancel you, the card. These are domestic. fraudulent. You're I'm referring to traveling domestically though, right? Or internationally. Uh, okay. So this is I mean, interesting. Anytime I travel. In and Canada, sometimes even if I just go to Nashville and I'm doing something in Nashville that I'm like, eh, I don't know if I, you know, I'll use a credit card instead of a debit card. I, I can actually take um, either of my debit cards into the States and use them just like credit cards. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can't buy stuff like I would on credit with it, but I can still use them and they will register as the same as credit card purchases. Oh, I so can do I the same thing. I just don't want to take that chance. I don't want my debit card. Oh, I see. I, thought, yes. yeah, I see. I, I can use my card if I want to. I just... You know, I, it's yeah, no, easier I, that if I, I have to set the card, card aside and say, I'm not using that card now because it's been hacked and I don't have a card now to use. Um, yeah, you're, yeah, you know. it's different when you're, when you're locking right. up your bank account. If you're just locking right. up your credit card account, all you're doing is saying, I won't be able to use it until we solve the problem, but you still have money in your right. bank. Exactly. So yeah, that makes sense. And, and to be honest with you, I kind of mostly do that same too, except it depends on the situation. Sometimes I'll still you know, like buy my gas with my, with my regular debit card, you know, if I'm traveling, uh, by car, um, stuff like that. Right. Uh, I might even pay for my hotel, depending on the situation. If I got points on my card for a hotel, I'll pay for a hotel with the credit card. But if it's not a situation like that, it's just a cheap motel. And I'm just going for one night. Cause I want to take some photographs at, you know, some really nice waterfall and best bet is to get a hotel for a motel for the night. And that's just, debit card or even cash <laughs> you know, staying one night you get out get your, get your continental yeah but continental so like breakfast and leave in canada when you go stay in a hotel do they automatically debit your card a provisional amount for um you know incidentals um depends on where you're staying um if you're staying in a place that's got something like sheraton written on it or or um Hilton, possibly. <laughs> um, cheap motels, some of them yes and some of them no. Inexpensive hotels, some of them yes and some of them no. I've gone to some where they did, some where they didn't. Some of them where they said, oh, the, the price is only $36 a night. And I'd say, what are all fees, including taxes? Oh, see, and they'd say, oh, no, that's $36 a night, including taxes. 
Uh, okay, here's $36. Is that all you need? Yep. If you're out by X o'clock, uh, then there's no extra yeah, charge. I, that doesn't, I, well, maybe it does here, but not in the hotels I've stayed at in the last 10 years, pretty much. <laughs> Everybody takes, uh, you know, like incidental charge. Oh, and also gas stations. I don't know how it is in Canada, but oh, God. you use a debit card and you're traveling, they'll debit. Like, so for example, if I go fill my car up, they'll, I'll get a charge for like $90, not a charge, sorry, a hold for like $90. And then when I'm done filling up and the transaction completes, then it does another hold or actual debit for the amount of the gas. And then the hold for the 90 falls off my card, but nonetheless, it's holding that amount. So that's why I don't use my I, debit card. I will tell you exactly what happened to me with my brand new Canadian tire triangle master card that i just got the other day uh, i don't have the physical card yet but of course as you know a lot of credit card companies you actually do your application online right on your phone and they'll tell you here's everything you need you can make purchases right now online go nuts so of course i'm like you know i'm gonna put some gas in my car i only need about 18 20 bucks that's about it right i go to the gas station freaking thing won't tap these gas stations i mean all these new pumps have tap right on them but when they first did it, they would take two or three hundred dollars to hold, much like what you're talking about. And then you'd make your purchase, and that's done. But the hold stays there for however many days before you finally get right. it back. Well, okay, this is not the credit card. I just got it. I don't even have the physical card yet. I don't want them holding three hundred dollars or whatever it is, right? And I don't think they do that. Anymore. I think they took it away. And I'll explain how that works in a second. I went inside. And I said, I want to buy, can I do this the same way as if I was inserting my card in there, but tap with my phone? I couldn't understand anything. So long story short, I finally got him to just do it. And I said, put $25 on, I'll tap it, I'll go fill it up. And when it only turns out to be 18 or $19, will it charge me 18 or 19? He said, yeah, but the hold for 25 will stay for X amount of days. I said, I'm good with that. I don't care. It'll come back. And I won't get charged interest because it's right. not going to take 28 days. So, <clears throat> sorry. Anyways, so I uh, I went and I did that, and that's how it works. And that, that hold is still there. So it's going to be there for at least another day, maybe maybe till Monday or Tuesday even. I don't know how long it takes. But I'm fine because, again, it'll work. But here's the thing. When you put your card into the thing, it always, if it doesn't work, it'll say something like can't, can't read the swipe, which is stupid because it's only supposed to read the chip, the chip and pin which we do ex exclusively in this country now for many years now. Swiping is a no-no. It's too easy to, to oh, sorry, steal yeah. information. So the chip and pin is the second safest way to do Well, tap is the easiest and safest. Tapping with your phone is by far safer than tapping with your card. And we can get yeah. into that another time. Well, actually, we should get into it in a minute because we are talking about security anyways. But anyway, so... I, I put my card in, it reads the chip, and it'll say chip red, uh, and then it'll spin around for a couple of seconds, and then it will ask you for, or uh, if you want to um, authorize for up to $200, $100, $50, or other, you hit other and say what you want. So I might say $10, $20, $40, or whatever. I think my car, I always try to go 5 to $10 over what I think my car will take so that I can fill it completely. So in this case, I knew it was going to be 20 or less. So I said 25 normally when I do it in, in normally, I mean, um, so I put it in there and I do that. And then when it spits out the receipt after it'll say $18 and whatever cents. And I look at my, uh, on the app on my phone and it'll show that's exactly what it took. It doesn't even try to take anything other than what you, um, authorize it to take, but then it won't take it until after it charges you for it. It's just authorized to take more, but doesn't do it. Going into the store is where I got screwed up because I had to go in because I didn't have the physical card at the time. So I understand what you're saying, but if you came here, even you would be able to put your card in. And even though it's an American card, it's still going to be a card that's recognized because right on most of the gas stations, right on the machine, will actually have five logos. Sorry, five. <laughs> I did this. Five locos, <laughs> but you'll be uh, Visa, American, American Express, Debit, um, 
uh, 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 MasterCard, and I forgot what then. I can't remember. Probably discover. Oh, it's, it's, sorry, fifth, no, sorry, it's six. It's six. No, do not discover. Not here. Um, although you might be able to use it, it's not listed in most places except restaurants mm. for obvious reasons. <laughs> but uh, also, it should be seven actually, or six or six, six or seven, whatever, because it will show uh, usually an Apple Pay and an Android um, or Google Pay symbol as well. Um, but those, I don't know why I've never got one to work with tap with a card or with the phone. It doesn't do it. You tap it, nothing happens. But then well, what I know the only good thing about COVID people, was most uh, of them will say, insert your points card first. So in order to tap your phone, you have to put a physical points card in to get the tap to work. I know. So. <laughs> but the bottom line is, if you came to Canada right now, you could fill your gas up and only pay for what you needed. No hold on anything else. But that wasn't That's true good. three years ago. That's only recent since COVID. They did it since COVID because there is no gas station in Toronto at all that will allow you to pay for gas after you put it in. You have to prepay everything. So they had to open it up and not hold. Because imagine if they held everybody's credit cards and debit cards. Just for well, yeah, it, it could be uh, it could cause somebody a problem. I mean, you know, yeah. but that's the only good thing about COVID was the fact that it it caused a rapid implementation of tap and pay and some of these digital means of payment and not yeah. having to physically touch cards and cash and all that. Uh, that's that was the that to me, that's the only positive. <laughs> that well, out of be clear, it. it was positive for you guys. For us, it was it was status quo already for several years already. Yeah, well, we didn't have that much, and and it's even the small merchants now. Yeah, I can tap and pay, and matter of fact, there's some like um, when I go to a Predators game, uh, there's a lot of the vendors there that won't take cash at all. They say no cash. That you well, no, have actually, to yeah, no, we have that with 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 uh, debit, you know, credit. You know, most of them are tap yeah. or you know, yeah. So my biggest I, I my biggest great. issue in all honesty, is going to a place that I've been told about for years. you got to go to this place off by the airport. They have the best food. Oh, it's so good. And everybody's like, oh, you got to go there. I've had dozens of people tell me this. And I like to go out and do this, some plane spotting and take pictures with my expensive camera that I no longer own. Another story. <laughs> um, but I thought, well, one day I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go to this restaurant. I go in there. I order. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's going to be good. And he says, he says that'll be you know twenty eight ninety five or whatever the price was, and I pulled out my wallet or my phone, whatever it was, and he says, "Well, we only take cash." Yeah, it is two thirty in the freaking morning, and I am starving to death, and I'm out at the airport. There is nothing open for halfway through the city back to my neighborhood, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> You know, I take that back. I don't there, carry cash anymore. There's one restaurant down the street. It's an old school barbecue pit. Oh, it has yeah. some of the best barbecue you can put your mouth on. They only take check or cash. They still take checks. They, they take checks. I haven't written a check. We'll I haven't written a check in probably five years or more. I okay. I've written a check in 14 years, dude. I know. Maybe, maybe 15. I don't even know what yeah. they look like anymore. Somebody yeah, and said I don't me, really carry cash. I don't somebody carry said cash. To me, We're going to need a void check for whatever service I was trying to do or whatever I was getting. And I said, a void check? What are you talking about? Nobody writes checks anymore. Where am I going to get a void check? Well, you can go to the bank and get one. I said, don't you take it electronically? It's the same information. Why do you need an actual piece of paper? That oh, someone can write down all said, my information for me. I can show it to you on my phone right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. <laughs> Boy, check. And just like branches, back in the day, and you probably remember this, you actually had to go to your own branch to get your money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you moved, yeah. God help you, because it took <laughs> weeks to get them to move your money. You'd actually have to close your account and reopen in a new bank rather than transfer. Yeah. It took longer to transfer than it was for you to take your money out, put it in a case, and travel across town to the other bank and go to another bank. Yeah, now I can I can name 
probably 10 banks off the top of my head that are branchless. They are oh my only Lord. digital I banks. hate to say this, but we actually have to stop because uh, after we cut off the blooper at the beginning, we will have only about 30 seconds of spare time. Otherwise, we go over. <laughs> well, uh, there's a, there's yeah. a lot to, that we can... Like yeah. the ending here where we're talking about having to cut it out. We, we, yeah, uh, well, you know, I think we might have to cut a little bit of stuff out. But the bottom line is, is uh, we were talking about security. So I think what we should do maybe is actually have uh, a quick short episode that we can do maybe over the weekend or something. Something that only lasts about 20 minutes just to touch up on a couple of things and kind of maybe bring a few things up that we didn't talk about in point form. Just to kind of get it out of the way. You know, yeah, uh, sure. it's something yeah. else. It might be interesting yeah. to do. But in the meantime and in between time, hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And I'll let Robert talk us out. <laughs> I am Robert from the United States and saying adios. Stay frosty. Oh, God, that's terrible.